So um, I figured I've been staring at Harry's top 10 for a week and I was like, nah, I don't do top 10s. I don't need to see Harry's top 10. It's going to suck anyway. <laughs> um, but then I realized this afternoon, I'm going to have to talk with you guys. So I have to know what, what Harry's up to, you know, what, what goes on in the mind of Harry. So I figured out, listen to the uh, top 10. And it was all fun and games until you got to number three. And there was Terran. And um, I felt, you know, oh, that's that's respectable. It's a good coaster. And then number two was Helix. And I just I just lost you there. And uh, yeah, that's basically what was going on. So, yeah, do you want to just, like, introduce yourself? Like, who are you? <laughs> right. Uh, okay, yeah, sure. So, okay. I, I just got to give a, a quick disclaimer. I really suck at these things. I, I think Harry knows by now. So, I'm Syl. You might know me as Silverant. I usually go by Sylv because the pronunciation and spelling of my name is just so ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, just call me Sylv. And uh, I make videos of creative games like Planet Coaster and City Skylines and stuff like that. And that's how I sort of rolled into the roller coaster um, enthusiast community as well. Which is actually quite interesting because it's it wasn't really always my thing. I used to be really afraid of roller coasters until two years ago. And then Same. I decided to get over my fear. And in the past two years, I've <laughs> like... <laughs> I've got over a hundred credits and I've just been trying to get into things as much as possible. Um, you guys can just fight about Taran because I just looked and there's no specific questions about Taran in any way. <laughs> my my whole ethos with, with Taran is basically that ride was built from the ground up. The theming and the roller coaster were all designed from the ground up. They had a big hole, a big pit, and they came up with Taran. Right? Helix was built on the hillside, you know? So it wasn't a blank canvas. There was something to work with. Helix's layout is one of the best layout designs I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. The iteration that went into it made it so well-designed, so well-paced and so smooth. Whereas you look at Taron's layout, which was also, which could have been anything. They could have designed it so that it was great in all of those elements as well. But the pacing is okay. Hmm. It it doesn't have huge amounts of like airtime when you think about it. Mm -hmm. That none of the layout is particularly well woven together. There's that I wouldn't say there's many quality strings of elements in that layout. Mm. It just kind of meanders. I think personally, I do agree that the layout of Helix is better than Terran's layout. I would take Helix layout over Terran any day. But the way that I don't know, for one, I feel like you're presenting it as if you know, it somehow matters that Terran was a blank slate and Helix is built on an already existing hillside with lots of scenery, which, I don't know, I'd like to see the experience as separate from the history of how it was built. And I think in a way, starting out with a blank slate, even though it sounds like it would give you more options, is a bit more difficult to pull off, especially given just how tiny the piece of land that Terran is built on is. Like, if you look at it on a map, it is so extremely compact and small like you basically walk through the whole area and you can walk through the whole area in like two minutes um and helix has a lot more space yeah. and terrain to work with which i think is something that you know from a scenery perspective gives you something that you can weave the coaster through without having to you know think of all of the scenery that it's going to interact with yourself and try to design that yourself there's already this really beautiful landscape to work with and also I think it gives you a little bit more flexibility in terms of where it's going. So, for instance, you get that first drop out of the station where you drop down, uh, which mm. is super cool, into the first launch. But you probably wouldn't be able to do that in Terran space because it's just not built on the hillside like that. So You don't need a hillside for that, though. You need. I was going to say, like, Wicker Man is kind of that, though. It's oh, a tiny oh, space. Yes. And what, they what, still manage to do something with it, you know? I was going to bring up for the clean slate argument Nemesis. Nemesis was literally yeah, so a flat piece of land with grass on it, mm -hmm. and they designed and they Nemesis. ripped it to shreds. Exactly. And I get what you mean. Sometimes it is easier to have 
some terrain to work with because it kind of gives you an idea of where you could go with it whereas having a blank canvas is a lot to work with and is pretty daunting uh yeah i i don't know man it's just i feel like it, it a taron as a layout wasn't particularly well designed at all mm. i i always when I, whenever i think about layouts i always think about what john wardy said where he goes you put your station in the middle of the the, the ride's height so that even when you're going towards the end of the ride, it's still fast and it still feels thrilling, right? Mm-hmm. So I always think about that. And Helix, I would say, has that. The station is quite high up um, so that there's a lot to work with. But obviously, you've got the hillside and that's why. Whereas Taran's is, it does have aspects of that. But both the first half at the end and the second half at the end just peter out. And the second half is for an entirely different reason right. than the first. but. It, I wouldn't say they're particularly consistent. Uh, that's a that's a very fair point, and I think you know with that, what it ultimately down comes down to is what you prefer in these layouts, I guess. Because for me, this doesn't so much play a role, even though I also hate the trims at the end of Terran. But I think they're just going for such a different thing. Um, with Nemesis going more for that, you know, station at the middle of the height of the ride, maybe even somewhere up there because it's really on top of the hill, uh, and Terran you know, being more of a completely different type of ride experience. And I think in the layout as well, in terms of elements, what it does, Helix, you know, just follows up all these different inversions and completely different elements, one after another, kind of, uh, I guess, Smiler style. And Terran is kind of a one-trick pony in a sense. It just meanders back and forth a lot with these different curves and transitions. And it doesn't do much more than that. And I think also to a large extent, your enjoyment of these rides is going to depend on how much you like what they're doing with their with their layouts. But I don't, I don't per se think that Terran's layout is bad just because they're meandering no, it's not bad. like that. I think that's what they were going for. And if they wanted mm. to build a more smiler uh, type or smiler type layout, they probably would have done it. So yeah, I, I don't think it's bad by any means. And I'm just trying to play the, the argument of devil's advocate here, where I, I am not a. Some people are really like layout elitist. Right. I, I am far from this. I've got Wicker Man on my top ten, man. That layout <laughs> sucks. Yeah. Right. Honestly, so the the overall package has so much to do with it, and Taron obviously is mm-hmm. an overall package. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Just when I compare the two, and when I think about how much fun I had on either of them. Helix just just had more. Mm-hmm. It just offered more, even though it has less in terms of theatrical and theming side. It offered more to me, just everything else. Right. Except but we were just, saying we haven't done it in the night time yet. This is very true. So, like, I feel like it might change. Like, as soon as we go back, you're just going to rethink the positioning again. Well, yeah, of course. That's how it works. Every, Every time, time you ride it, you're just going to be like, which one's better? So, yeah. yeah. No, that's but true. That's, that's how it goes. And I mean, I was just joking about being angry about placing Helix higher. I do think that's the more. <laughs> no, I know. Uh, I don't know. That's the that's the the sort of hot take, right, in the coast community. Most people, I think, would rate Terran higher, or at least there's a very large uh, proportion of people who are like absolutely insane about defending Terran against every opinion yeah. that's negative about it. So. I mean, in the end, I don't really feel too strongly either way. I think Helix's layout no. is better and Terran's scenery is better. And for me, the scenery oh, yeah. just counts a lot. And um, mm. oh, yeah. I think also for me, I'm quite a launch person. I really like launched coasters, especially. So for that reason, Terran comes on top of Helix as well. If Helix mm-hmm. had the same kind of launches as Terran, I do think it would have topped it for me. Um but the launches on the Helix are just like, you know, driving a car on the highway, pretty much. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not existent, but I feel like they don't need to exist. Right. I do kind of miss it. At though. all. So that's also part of my thought. Like when, whenever you hit the... Se- Actually, Terran's second launch is my favorite launch that I've ever been on, which is a bit of a hot take in itself because I've been on Dododompa, which is objectively the strongest launch in the world. Yeah, but... Apparently, it's just not very good uh, overall. That whole ride, yeah, is just the a bit whole like, ride mm. kind of sucks. But even just the launch itself of Terran, I sort of prefer because it's 
you know, because it's placed in this context of the whole scenery around it and in the ride. Yeah. And I think that's also a thing. People sometimes make the argument of, you know, sometimes you need to take the layout out of the context that it's in and just no, judge it on its own merit. Yeah, I agree. I don't think you can do that. And with Terran, no. I think the layout was designed in part in such a way to work with the scenery, to have well, it this sort of interaction <laughs> with the rock work, et cetera. And that's what yeah. makes, you know, that second launch so great for me. Mm. So speaking of launches, have you done Novgorod? Uh, yeah, I have. And God damn it, that launch is amazing. It feels like you've been punched in the chest. Yeah, it's <laughs> insane. I think, isn't that objectively, like statistically speaking, one of the strongest launches in Europe? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's it's an underrated ride in general. I think it not is. many people talk about it, and no. it's it's a bit short, well, but it's amazing. Hands of Park is underrated, just right. generally. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So when I was there, I uh, I did Heide Park and Hansa Park, sort of in a one combined holiday, and yeah. I actually much preferred Hansa Park over Heide Park. Oh yeah, definitely. There's just there's a nice feel when you have. I don't know, Hansa Park is a park that when you go through it, you realize that they care. Mm -hmm. And everything about it kind of screams that they're really trying their best. Yeah, right. And uh, as you can even see that in, in the developments, that, the developments they're making now, where Highlander, their new drop tower, is retheming a whole area with two coasters being entirely rethemed. Because mm -hmm. those two rides, you know, uh, Nessie had like a crappy old station, a kind of metallic platform station that are just you have for traveling rides mm -hmm. and now it's being given a proper station and you can you can see that kind of improvement park wide and it, yeah it's just a nice a nice feel it feels i don't know no i can totally good. see that it feels like a family park that's sort of grown yeah. into what it is now yes. over time and yeah um, you know, some people see this as a downside when you've got certain areas that are clearly much newer and much more well-themed than others. And I think you do get that in Hansa Park. But for me, it's also Definitely. just a nice way to see how the park has grown over time. And I really like mm. that sort of charming aspect of it. Whereas Heide Park is clearly a big commercial resort owned by Merlin. And that just in itself takes some of the charm away. You know, nothing against it Merlin does. per se, but... I don't know. I feel like they're. Losing I don't think Heidi Park's bad in any, in any uh, world at all. Right. I don't know. It, it was difficult. I visited Heidi Park when the, when it was raining and grey skies. Mm -hmm. Whereas when we got to Hansa Park, it was blue skies, really sunny. So even that just makes a difference in terms of the kind of day you have. Yeah, that's totally true. And I think that sort of that sort of relates to what you've been saying about your top 10 as well everything just depends on the context in which you visit yeah. a park and which you visit a coaster what you rate Definitely. it like um but for me Hyde park is a park with so many decent rides uh it has so many roller coasters which are all okay but no roller coasters yeah. which are stunning and well, even though hansa has less uh, Novgorod and uh, Karanon alone for me made it better. Yeah. Well, this is it. If you visit Heidi Park without Colossus, then. Ah, that's true. Then, yeah, you, you don't really have any standout ride. But the same could be said about Gardaland, where there's no particularly fantastic coaster. Mm -hmm. But Gardaland is a beautiful park and it's a lovely place to be. Very different to Heidi Park. Gardaland feels much more. Yeah, it just has more of a charm to it. Mm -hmm. Again, it feels more like they care about it and that it has been developed over time. Right. Has it, though? Has it always been part of Merlin? Because I've never been there. Since 2007 and... or 8 or 6, around that region. Right, <laughs> yeah. So, it, it, but this is it. <clears throat> Even, I don't know how other park chains work, but Merlin parks, they're operated by the park you know, mm -hmm. it's not Merlin has an overreaching hand about how every single park does stuff. Each park operates independently. Right. So Heidi Park's making different decisions. Thought Park's making different decisions. Bad ones. Um, <laughs> no, that's a joke. And then Alton Towers and Gardland, they're all making different decisions. So all the parks end up being very different. And Gardland, the people who work for Gardland are obviously making some good decisions in, in my books anyway. Oh, right. That makes sense. Didn't actually know that. But... For me, 
I don't know. I still feel the same way about Hyde Park. It just feels too calculated. It feels yeah, quite it generic. Does. Like it's just trying to hit every beat that a theme park needs, but it doesn't really, you know, strive for anything beyond that. It just does what a theme park does and it does it all right, but it's nothing out of mm-hmm. the ordinary. No. Except I Colossus know. maybe, which yeah, I missed because it was closed at the time of my visit. Same. Mm. Sad times, eh? So we have this question that everybody asks answers at the start of the pod. So mm-hmm. if you had free reign to create any coaster type with any theme, what would it be? Oh, wow. Wow. Well, On the spot. Yeah, this is like our big question for the start. Yeah, right. So I actually haven't thought about this at all. So um, you know what would be super cool? So my favorite theme in general, I would say, is something fantasy something like medieval fantasy ish kind of like mm-hmm. Terran is for instance it's a really broad theme because it could be you know anything in any part of europe generally yeah um but no that that kind of theme is super cool where you can experiment with castles and like alpine villages and things like that and mm-hmm. my favorite coaster type at least of ride experience itself would be a 4d coaster the traditional ones of Aero and mm-hmm. SNS, not the ones that are on two rails and just kind of bounce back and forth. Like the ones yeah. that are actually doing curves and have this this sort of controlled X2 rotation. I- Igenic. Yeah, exactly. Igenic, or whatever it is. And none of these rides has really been themed yet, which I, I, I can kind of see why. They're huge. They're really yeah. difficult. But we've got themed wing riders now, which is super cool. So I think it would be amazing to have a themed 4D coaster, kind of like themed wing riders, except then the seats rotate. That would be absolutely amazing, I think. That's quite unique. Yeah. Are you, are you a story-driven guy? Do you like to have stories behind rides? Are you not too bothered? Like, would there be some overarching story to this roller coaster, or would it just be medieval set? Mm, I think it would be cool to have it... Uh, Kind of like the story of Villa Volta and the Efteling, or I guess Hex is a similar story, you know, something about a curse uh, yeah. or, or Canon mm-hmm. even, because yeah. I really, <laughs> I really like horror themed uh, theme yeah. park rides and they're way too few and far between. And I think it's a really cool medium for making scary stuff because not only are you scared by the ride experience itself, but there's always this over, this, this whole feeling of dread and, you know, mm-hmm. jump scares and stuff like that. So I think... Yeah, that would work really well. I think in the UK we have like quite a few horror fi- like. I was just themes. gonna say, yeah. How many modern parks have you been to um, with your horror theme rides? Uh, I mean, they've... just Hyde Park. <laughs> if you think about all of the new modern additions. Yeah. True. They're Smiler, really Wicker Man, the Swarm, Saw the Ride, Raptor at Guardland. Thirteen, uh, which is a family one. Thirteen, Flog the Demonen. Right, yeah, Colossus. They love it. Mm. I think I think just... actually maybe okay so I haven't been on 13 but I kind of feel like 13 does it maybe exceptionally well especially with the the indoor part but yeah. my my personal reference for this idea was actually Cairnon I have rarely shit my pants as much as I did going on Cairnon <laughs> and you know it's not Great just the same. coaster itself I you know the I, at that point I had a fair bit of experience I wasn't afraid of some drop or anything but for one, there's the vertical lift hill with lap bars indoors, which is just oh my God. the scariest thing ever. Yeah. But also, right, uh, so, so when I went on this, uh, we, you start out in the queue and you get the story told to you, which is quite cool. It's nice to have this sort of background about this yeah, definitely. first castle. Um, and then at some point in the queue line, before you actually board the station, you have to pack up all of your, your bags and stuff and put them in these lockers. And, well, they're not really lockers, but, like, the the whole baggage system. And I always take off my glasses just to be safe, especially when I'm riding a coaster for the first time and I don't know how strong the airtime is. And my sight is really bad. So at this point, I was feeling naked without my glasses and we still (laughs) had to go through the the whole, quote-unquote, selection procedure, right? So for those who don't know about this, you basically have to stand in a circle with the other people and you're all standing in front of a door and then this light goes around and it assigns you a random seat. Uh, so this is how you get assigned to your rows. And the first time I was there, I really didn't 
understand exactly how everything worked. I just knew that we were getting assigned stuff and it was dark and there were loud sounds and everything. And I was already kind of nervous, but that whole like vibe of getting chosen <laughs> to sit what row you sit on in yeah. this weird like ceremony just added to that whole horror theme. And then you board the ride and it's completely pitch black. You don't see anything. And nope. you're in this lap bar feeling super vulnerable and suddenly just mm. rise up straight to the lift hill, completely vertical uh, with nothing but this tiny little seat behind you, uh, which is the only thing behind you and an over 60 meter tall drop. And that was just the scariest moment that I've ever experienced on a roller coaster. And recreating that, that would be amazing. I really loved it. Yeah. Mm. I, I had a similar experience when I first rode um Kanan. I, you know, like every enthusiast, try to leave as much space between me and the restraint. And I hadn't experienced any Gerst lap bars yet, or many lap bars to be fair. So we we go, you know, 90 degrees straight up and I could put the back of my head over the back of the the headrest. Oh, God. And I, it was just too much. I physically pulled the <laughs> lap bar down because I was just too scared. It, it was ridiculous. It was absolutely yeah. ridiculous. But you are right. The whole ceremony really builds um, builds it up. Even the like pre-show that is storing the loose articles, you know, yeah. it's so weird how it's all done. But it's a lovely ride. <laughs> Everything about it. Don't Is get it? Harry started again. <laughs> I don't, no, it's for Hansa Park to come out with something like that. This this <gasps> yeah, yeah, family owned it's theme great. park. It's ma- it's pretty mad. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I guess so he's heard this quite a few times already. But oh, no. so many Gosh, times. Yes. So many times. I, I agree though. It is amazing. I really love it. Once I go on it, I'm gonna be like, okay, you can talk about it as many times as you want. Yep. But until that <laughs> just calm down. <laughs> Um, yeah, so what's your home park? So this one's kind of difficult because I moved at the start of this year from the Netherlands to Belgium. And my old answer would have been the Efteling, which was Mm -hmm. super close to my place. I could, you know, it would be under half an hour by car. So that was really cool. Nice. But by now, the closest park that I'm to is actually Walibi, Belgium. And it doesn't really feel like a home park yet because I haven't been there yet. Yeah. But I definitely want to visit that. And it's right now number one on my bucket list of theme parks to visit. Just because it's 20 minutes by train and there's a train station really close to my home anyway. So got to go there soon and ride some of their pretty nice rides. So yeah, I guess that's nice. my home park. Yeah. What would be Belgium's getting new coaster, right? It's the, uh, the Hyper, right? Or was there still something before that? <laughs> because they've got quite some plans, I think. Yeah, which one's getting what? I I don't know. Is it the hyper? <laughs> I know that they had like so like a, a, over a year ago or something. They unveiled their plans for first Tikiwaka and then something else, and then there was a leak, wasn't there, or something? Right. I think it is the hyper. I think you are right. I think it is the Intamin hyper. In, in that case, that's going to be insane because I remember those pictures and it looks absolutely amazing. And it's also kind of what the park needs, I think, because even though I haven't been there yet. I kind of feel the same way about it that I do with Hyde Park without Colossus. It's got some nice coasters, yeah. but it has nothing spectacular that makes you really want to go there. Yeah, it's uh, into the mega coaster. Right. Oh, that's going to be amazing. So, 2021. So that's... Got a while to wait. That's a little <laughs> bit too long. Yeah, I'll definitely go there this year as well. I mean, it's still worth it. You've got Pulsar, which looks really cool. I'm not a big yeah. fan of like shuttle coasters, but this one's quite unique. Uh, should be good. And also the, um, God, I forgot the name of it, but there's Schwarzkopf Shuttle Loop, which... Uh, Psych Underground. Right. Psyche. Yeah, right. And I've never been on a Schwarzkopf Shuttle Loop coaster, and no. I love Schwarzkopf, so mm. really want to try that as well. It looks cool. Definitely. Yep. Also, there's a, there's a bit of Roller Coaster Tycoon to nostalgia over there, I guess, since it was <laughs> one of the parks that you get with Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. Yeah. And I mean, my real introduction to theme parks was playing Roller Coaster Tycoon as a kid. And, you know, yeah. what I had with uh, Wally B. Holland and Six Flags Magic Mountain, it's just mm. really cool to walk around in these parks that you've looked at so many times in a video game before. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely going to be part of what hopefully makes it a nice park to visit as well. Um, what was like the first roller coaster you ever went on? Oh my God. I really don't remember. Uh, <laughs> That's fair enough. I don't it's remember. a hard one. Yeah, right. 
I so basically when I was really young, I would write some coasters and I remember, you know, not handling them too well, but still I wrote all of the kiddie coasters. And then at some point I stopped going to theme parks for like a year or two because my parents just never really took us to theme parks. And in that time, I just became scared of it. Like, I didn't really know what the experience <laughs> felt like anymore. And I didn't want to try it anymore. So I've only written some kiddie coasters in that time. I think the first coaster that I've written is probably in a Dutch, call, uh, Dutch park called Drieflied. Um <laughs> Yeah, probably. And it's probably Twistrix, which is the coaster really close to the entrance there. It's this really weird max spinning coaster with large spinning trains and even though it's just a few meters tall it's really small it spins like crazy um actually i want to go back there and ride that coaster again just because it's so weird and i haven't been there in so <laughs> long uh but yeah that's probably my first coaster and one of my last as well before i didn't ride coasters until i was like 20 and even in that time i was afraid of kitty coasters like here I was, this this adult person who didn't even dare to ride kiddie coasters. So <laughs> it really pretty much ended with kiddie coasters there for a while. I was the same. I didn't ride anything until I met Harry and then he forced me. Oh, wow. Well, it's because you'd ridden all the terrible rides. Yeah. <laughs> That's where I went wrong. I went on like the worst ones. There's always the ones few that of roller I hate coasters. now still. Yeah, there's always few of roller coasters was Colossus at Thorpe Park and only Colossus. Oh. Which is not and a good one to start fish, with. And Flying Fish, mate. Come well, on. Well, yeah, but that's fine. <laughs> right. I mean, then again, you guys are from uh, Britain. <laughs> Not exactly well known for having amazing coasters. Yeah. Well, no. But the thing is with Hold me on. is like, I don't like rough coasters and that's like the roughest coaster ever. Right. Yeah. There's, you've got to think the UK has five B&Ms and each of them are pretty smooth. If I'd have gone on a different ride and, and it had been smooth, then I probably would have thought okay maybe they're like this different. is it if you would have started with something like nemesis inferno which i never would have because i didn't want my feet to dangle <laughs> well there you go so you know I but anyway yeah i think that makes sense i mean okay so england isn't just terrible coasters but <laughs> as <laughs> when you were doing your, ten, your top <laughs> 10 between the lines i could feel some shade toward britain just because you know you said that before you went out of the country to try different coasters abroad you hadn't really experienced any airtime, so you went on Silver Star, get some okay air yeah. floater airtime, mm -hmm. and it's a mind-boggling experience. And you go on yeah. Woden, you've never been on a modern wooden coaster like that, and it's a it's a mind-blowing experience. Kind of in that sense, I guess. There's not a well, lot that you can sort of like ease people into roller coasters with. And if you look at Princess Parks like the Efteling, I think they're really good like family coasters and rides that you know. Are, are good to start off with and get going. Yeah, I think the UK kind of, the collection of rides we have isn't very broad, or at least it wasn't. I mean, Icon and Wickerman have helped to kind of expand that. Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, I think those two, along with Nemesis, are probably some of the best, uh, well, and the Smiler, but even that is kind of a recent addition, are probably some of the best coasters in the country. Oh, yeah. No, no definitely. Yeah, this is it. The UK's collection of rides is odd i mean not to throw any shade at britain either um but i, I guess it's especially in in like bef until uh, before a few years ago because now they're you're getting some really good rides like icon and uh well everything else that's been built in recent years in alton towers especially but also you know if you if you were in england or i should say the uk i'm sorry i should start mixing terms <laughs> Uh, if you were in the UK like 10 years ago, I wouldn't really know any good coasters to get into roller coasters, really. Yeah. So I guess I guess that's probably part of it. And for me, I guess I moved to the example of the Efteling, uh, because the Efteling doesn't really have any particularly amazing or thrilling coasters. In fact, I think they're all quite boring, and the park really needs to step their game up, but they don't seem to want to do that. But uh, <laughs> they do have a nice selection of rides with which the family can enjoy. And yeah. which you can sort of get into roller coasters uh, with. And actually, for me, that's where I actually got over my fear of roller coasters. So a little bit before I visited the Efteling, I went to a fairground, tried like a, a stupid wild mouse. 
and figured, all right, it's not so bad. Maybe I can try all the roller coasters in the Efteling, kind of, you know, starting off with the least intense and moving to Bern yeah. 1898. And yep. I really didn't expect that I would dare to do Bern 1898 at the start of that day. Like uh, I was I was looking at it and like, God, that's way too tall. I'm never doing that. Um, <laughs> but they just have so many family rides that sort of ease you and gradually ramp up the intensity while they're all pretty smooth and enjoyable and all nicely themed as well. So, you know, you want to write them to also not miss out on any of the theming and storytelling that I got there eventually. And at the end of the day, I managed to uh, pull myself together and write Baron 1898. And then I was <laughs> addicted, basically, I guess. <laughs> what year was this? That you, uh, you know, overcame your fear? Right. I think this was 2017. Or it could yeah. be 2016 as well. I'm not sure exactly anymore. Yeah, 2016, actually. That's like not even that long ago. No. Yep. <laughs> Crazy. It's also weird because I sort of got my... I, I sort of, you know, became known in the coaster community, I guess, through Planet Coaster. And at that time, I was yeah. already making videos. And this whole time, I was building roller coasters and theme parks. And in real life, I was actually too afraid to ride any of them. <laughs> That's such a weird way to get into them. Yeah. Because normally you get into them because you love them already. Right. Weird. But you that did is... it the opposite way around. Yeah. It's it's good though. Mm. I mean, I'm glad that the oh, community yeah. has sort of forced me to get over it because <laughs> when you're surrounded by people <laughs> who are all hyping up this thing and who want to make you finally ride roller coasters, that is a, a a good motivation to get over your fear. Yeah. Well, that's what I had with Harry. He was just like please, can you ride this? Because I want to go to a theme park. Right. So. You, make me, you make me sound so bad every time. You say <laughs> yeah, but do you not remember how scared I was? Yeah. Obviously, I'm and happy now about it. You but did it. it was, uh, it was hard times. So what did we go on first? I can't yeah. remember. What was the strategy? Did you have like a plan? Like, oh, we should go well, here because, you know, it's a good start. We would have been at Thought Park, yeah, right? Yeah, it, it was definitely Thought Park. And oh, I don't know. It probably would have been like... Had I ridden Swarm before before all of this? No, I, I don't think so. No, so, I think maybe Swarm was the turning point. Yeah. If I had a plan, it would have been to either ride Swarm or Inferno. Yeah, just like a smoother thing. Yeah. Probably the Swarm because it's a bit more ca it's a bit more uh, relaxing. Yeah. It's intimidating but then though, after the way it looks, I think. Yeah, it is intimidating. Mm. But you just got to... Once you <laughs> do it once, though... <laughs> It doesn't seem as intimidating. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I don't know. I don't know how we did that's it. That's so annoying fair. that we can't remember. Yeah. Do you remember when you made me go on stealth? Yeah. And I literally cried. It's fine. It's good. <laughs> you could, you could do it now. I don't know. Yeah, what you I could do it, you but I don't do like it. it. No, I'm sure you would like it a lot it's more. It's such now. a pointless ride. You've done. You've done much more. Yeah, I could, sure I could do it. I just, what's the point? It's good. It's boring. No, it's, it's, it's a one-trick <laughs> pony, you know? It's, yeah, exactly. But it's still good. It I don't want to queue good. like an hour for that. Yeah, no, I wouldn't queue an hour for that. No yeah. way. Wow, I'm glad you guys have found some common ground there. I, I actually <laughs> agree, though. I, I mean, I haven't, built, I haven't been on Stealth, but I've been on Dodo Dompa, which I kind of feel the yeah. same way about. It's just a launch, and then you do something for a little bit. And then it's the end, and you just queue way too long for less than a minute of ride time. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, what's your favorite ride and your favorite park? Okay, so my favorite ride, we've talked a little bit about already, uh, that's Terran. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> mm -hmm. may maybe I should explain myself here because I always joke that I think people's opinions are stupid. People's opinions, can, they can actually be stupid. Uh, yeah, not no, because you can. they. It's a they guy like, called. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, no. No, not no. because they they like a certain coaster and I think that's ridiculous, but just if, if you know, their reasoning doesn't make sense, you know, mm. people whose top tens are all over the place, I, I really don't get that. Um, but I mean, your number one could be Wicker Man, you know, what does it matter? It's, it's all personal. As long as that sort of fits into what you like in a coaster, uh, then mm. sure. But um, God, the, the, what was the question again? Oh, yeah, right. What, what's my favorite coaster? <laughs> so yeah, Terran for me is just part of that I like scenery so much um so I got into these whole theme park games because I was into the scenery side of theme parks and like the whole experience side uh, I was never into the roller coasters initially because 
I was afraid of them, uh, didn't really much like them anyway. Um, so I was there to really do scenery stuff. And eventually I moved into coasters because, well, I guess you have to make some coasters if you want to try and make some make-believe theme parks in a video <laughs> game. And um, that that is how I eventually got into coasters. But I've always loved architecture and scenery. Um, and I mean, just getting this appreciation for coasters, I still have that. Um, and Taran just makes me so happy as this kind of scenery-minded person, just because the the whole Klugheim region is so immersively themed. It's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. The interaction that it has with the scenery and the paths and everything is really cool. Um, so yeah, the layout itself isn't that good, but just the way that it moves through that whole landscape, it's just the most fun ride that I've had. And um, like Harry said, I think that's the best way to put it. I don't like to you know, have any outlandish way of like statistically measuring how much I like a ride based on how much I value airtime or anything like that. The most important thing is just how much fun do I have riding yeah, that coaster. Totally. And for me, I always like to do the, the sort of thought experiment. Like if I could be teleported right now to any coaster in the world and ride it and be teleported back to my current position, yeah. um, where would I want to go? And that would probably still just be Terran for me. Just the whole experience with all the scenery and everything is just so good. Uh, it, it even smells good. God damn. You've got like this little <laughs> stall <What>? selling um, <laughs> these, these like these Alpine Flammkuchen, which is so delicious. You just you fly through these buildings and you just get a whiff of cheese and bacon. Uh, it's amazing. I love it. So Wow. That is a you, your thought experiment is a good one though. I do like that. That's a good yeah, it's more like a feeling. Way of about it. It's like a gut feeling yeah. of how good the ride was. Yeah, right. Based on that, Zoe, would you still say Helix? Yeah. Yeah. Helix yeah. is so good. But yeah. ugh, I hate saying that because it's like, yeah, Helix is great, but then we haven't been back to Fantasyland yet. No. So it's like, let's just pause until. We've done a what? fair test. Still say Kanan out of, out of Obviously, you'd still say Kanan, Harry. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm I'm a really I'm a you know you say you're big on scenery, so yeah. I'm big on story. Right. I appreciate rides that have a storyline, like a meaning, N like a yeah a meaning basically. Mm -hmm. I and it kind of it. it not detracts, but I get a little saddened when a ride has theming but no story. Mm -hmm. And Taron is the yeah critical example of that because the story is just complete garbage. <laughs> yep. What is the story? Oh. There's actually a story. Yeah, it just. Um, I, wow. It, I've heard so many people come up with different ways of explaining it. It's it's something like there's this. It's a village, right? And. Taran is some sort of method of transporting energy and Rake is some sort of time machine. Yeah. Okay. I don't I don't know. It's Wait, weird, there's a really story weird. between the two rides. Yeah. I've always understood Rake much more and I think Rake does have some storytelling elements which work really well yeah. in the theme park. So, um I think my personal idea of storytelling here kind of differs from yours maybe. So, actually, this is this is kind of a hot take as well, I guess. What I really hate <laughs> is when you go into a theme park and it just shoehorns this story into a queue line or something like this. You have to listen to some dude going on and on about some weird, stupid story about a tower in Denmark or whatever, or some stupid <laughs> story about a Dutch wow. guy who wasn't supposed to see all at Easter and then he did anyway. And he turned into a ghost and a uh, flying Dutchman. Uh, yeah. Like... I like it Spoiled when it. it's more open to interpretation and um, yeah, okay. it tells a story in a way that only a theme park can in your kind of own experience. And I think actually Rake does that a little bit better, at least much better than Terran actually, because it has, you know, the scenery elements of time. Uh, the ride itself goes back and forth, kind of like time does. Yeah. It has the station, has these different elements, which work in tandem with whether the ride is going forwards or backwards. I think that's really cool. Uh, but Terran totally messes up in this way. It doesn't have a storytelling in the traditional sense of, you know, somebody reading the story to you or explaining some kind of background. And it doesn't really tell a story with the ride or, you know, walking even experience either. It's just kind of there, which I do agree that really sucks. Um, 
But my favorite kind is just where they manage to tell some sort of a story in a right experience without any words. Mm. And okay, actually, would you allow me to segue into your second question that I just realized you also asked about my favorite park? <laughs> yeah, uh, go for it. So like my favorite park in the world is actually Tokyo Disney Sea. Uh, again, okay. just because I really like scenery and I do like storytelling, but I think the park does storytelling in an amazing way um, without, you know, literally telling you a story. And I think that's what makes the dark rides in the park so good. Um, because to anyone who's even remotely into dark rides or theme park enthusiasm in general, I think um, almost everybody is aware that Tokyo Disney Sea is really well known for the amazing dark rides, probably some of the best in the world. Um, especially Journey to the Center of the Earth, which Rob Alvey seems to always tout as the single best dark ride in the world because he's <laughs> Rob Alvey and he can claim what the best certain type of ride is and then everybody will <laughs> believe that as the objective truth, which is it's stupid. True, yeah. But um, I think he does have a point. Uh, so what makes that ride so amazing is that it sort of tells you a story without telling you anything. You know, It doesn't give you some sort of background when you're in the queue, uh, but you get the story throughout the ride experience. So if I can yeah. summarize this a little bit, you start off with the queue, uh, you move into this cave. Uh, to even get to the entrance, you have to move into a cave. Uh, the queue line sort of wiggles around this, this, this inner cave area with all kinds of weird instruments. Eventually, you have to move into elevators, which supposedly bring you down all the way somewhere. I mean, they never really explain <laughs> it, but you're clearly going down very deep because yeah. you can feel these elevators moving and they make it look as if you're you know, going down yeah, deep yeah, into yeah. the Earth's crust. You really don't, actually. They're just moving simulators Obviously and you stay on the same floor. <laughs> uh, but it's really well done. Oh it's God. super well disguised. So after that, yeah. you move into the station and everything looks as though you're you know, deep underground. So you kind of get the story like, oh, we're going on some sort of yeah, underground yeah. expedition. You move into yep. these crazy cars and even the trek itself after that, you know, it, slight, it goes down more and more and you sort of have these tight corners where you keep going lower and lower and the scenery gets crazier and crazier all the time until you get to this room where there's like lava and fire everywhere and like a big monster, which is the most amazing animatronic which I've ever seen. And, you know, it doesn't explicitly tell you a story, but you kind of get what's happening and you know yeah. what's going on. And then you finally launch out of that. You go up this really, really large hill. Uh, so you get that you're launching out of this whole area. And finally, you see the park for a split second as you drop out of the mountain into this like open area. And you're back on the planet's surface again. And it's super cool how it sort of tells this story without saying anything. And I think that's the way in which theme parks are you know, best served at telling a story. Because... Well, a literal narrative, you can do that in a book or a TV show or something like that as well. But mm. an experience like this is unique to theme parks. And that's why I think it's so cool. I think the reason why it's so good is because it's like not telling you a story. You're like physically in the story. Right. If that makes sense. Like you're mm. like an explorer, whatever. You're like in the story. You're like the main character. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to tell you the story because you're just living it. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think so. And I guess it leaves some things open to interpretation because, you know, yeah. uh, it never really tells you why you're there. Uh, what I like about the park also is that it is like other Disney films based on existing properties, but it's all kind of based on B-movies and lesser known stuff. I mean, yeah. the, the part of the population that's watched the original Journey to the Center of the Earth is pretty small. Um, so most people won't know anything about this. Um, but you get what's generally going on and the rest of the details you sort of get to fill in in your mind, which is really cool. So I like that about it. I don't think it's the best dark ride in the world, though. I think that's a bit of a hard title to give to any certain ride. But mm -hmm. it's really, really good. Yeah, we need to get to that park ASAP. <laughs> There's ASAP. many places we need to go. Mm. I mean, it, I do think it's the best uh, park Oh yeah, actually, that was the question, huh? What's the best park? Yeah. We only talked about one <laughs> ride. So <You> said it, <laughs> yeah. the park has so many rides that I could g tell you so much about. But I mean, what I really like about it is just that it's good in so many different ways. The scenery is the best I've ever seen. It's super immersive. It's unique. Um, 
it doesn't have the same sort of commercial ring to it that other Disney parks have. Uh, for one, I guess, because it hasn't been designed in the same uh, idea and by the same people as other Disney parks. It was just some Japanese companies going up to Disney and asking them if they could build their own Disney park. Um, so that gives it from a bit of a different perspective as well. Yeah. Um, but also it's just even scenery aside, the food in the park is really good, uh, which theme park food is too often just chips and something else. Um, mm, yeah. And the employees are amazing. They're are so many shows that are just people walking around in the park randomly and doing all of these little performances everywhere. Uh, there's lots of uh, musicians going around and doing some acts. It's the atmosphere that even the people themselves bring into the park. And this is, this is I guess, something that you can't just easily recreate anywhere else because the Japanese people, they are just into this. They are so into this. They go there with all of that Disney merch. Uh, I've seen many people... <laughs> Many groups of friends even, you know, all dressing in the same clothes. You see couples which all have matching style clothes and <laughs> everybody just goes along with everything, which is really cool and really helps to be immersed into the theme park. Um, so yeah, just everything from the scenery to the food, to the atmosphere, to the rides themselves, which are absolutely phenomenal. That's what makes it my favorite theme park. It's so go. jealous. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you can really add much to that. I've just been gushing yeah. about the park. I do have to say, uh, especially more recently, I've sort of come to turn around about, uh, about one ride in particular, which is called uh, Sinbad's um, Storybook Voyage, something like that. In any case, right. I always call it Sinbad because the real name is a bit too long to remember. <laughs> um, yeah. But that ride is just so charming and I didn't expect to like it at first, but it really grown over me over time. Again, because it it tells a story without really using any words per se. It does have a, mm. a song that's Japanese, which I didn't understand much of. Um, but even regardless of that, the whole story that goes on in the right, you can tell without any words what's going on. And it's just such a charming and beautiful uh, little ride with an amazing soundtrack to boot that it's just become my favorite dark ride at least at the moment um should we move on to the twitter questions harry because yeah 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 i mean first of all we oh, had a number God. of questions concerning this is your fault, sorry, the, the pizza <laughs> this is your fault okay <laughs> things like why did you steal the pizza do you feel good about stealing the pizza and then people asking what your favorite toppings are. Oh, my God. I mean, they really took it to a new level. So I don't, I can't remember what happened with this pizza. We didn't steal it. That was yeah. me trying to get yeah. people to click on the video. <laughs> yeah. So first things first, it's all Harry's fault because it was his clickbait. I was never. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was my clickbait. Exactly. You're uh, right. However, He's branded you a thief. So basically what I did is a lot of people didn't finish their food and a lot of people just happened to have pizza and mm -hmm. I was so b by principle I don't like throwing food away and yeah, um, well, I was just asking enough. everybody are you gonna finish that and <laughs> winking at them excessively no maybe, maybe <laughs> except the winking part but um, wow. I was just going around and asking people if they were gonna finish their stuff and a lot of people weren't and I think um, I ended up eating pizza from all of all of the all of the big guys, right? Uh, mm, I ended up finishing uh, Taylor's pizza. I ended up finishing Chad's pizza. I don't know if you yep. had pizza, Harry, but it I did definitely finish. Yeah, so <laughs> I finished your pizza <laughs> as well, and probably a few other items to boot. But that's yeah. basically where it came from. I just don't like throwing food away, and I'm way too self-conscious about that. I suppose. Well. If you can eat it, you might as well eat it, you know? Exactly, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> and it made for a good clickbait, I suppose. It did. Exactly, it did. and people clearly, you know, it really got Resonated. to them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. Um, so that's the pizza out of the way. Actually, oh, wait, my favorite topping. I almost forgot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I rarely eat pizza, actually. I've only had it once in, like, the past half year. I'm a student, but really? I never eat oh frozen God. pizza because I just wow. hate it. Um, but I do love a good pizza, and yeah. honestly, my Tell favorite is just basic, basic as hell. Actually, just a simple margarita, just 
perfect. Uh, nice. Like my favorite pizza would just be tomato sauce, mozzarella, and uh, basil, and that's that's all it really needs. Just a yeah. good simple pizza. But if I mm-hmm. could choose like an extra topping, that's my favorite. It would be uh, mushrooms. Actually, I really nice. love mushroom pizza. Go on, Zoe. What's yours? We'll all go through. Uh, mine not? would be black olives. At, wait, how how many do we get? As many as you want. Okay, black <laughs> olives and like rocket on the top. Jeez. Amazing. Uh, mine would be pulled chicken. Ooh. <laughs> Specifically um, pulled. Yeah. Uh, ham and pepperoni. The, the, that combo of three meats is such a good combo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've never tried that. that. Uh, it's, one it's day. real good, man. Where do it's I get this? <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where you could get it. I don't know. I've, I don't think I've ever Prezzo. seen it on the menu. Yeah. Well, if you do, give it a try. To be yeah. fair, though, only Prezzo does it here. Yeah. Like only one restaurant does it here. This is true. Right. Not many restaurants do that kind of combo. It's because it's very posh. Wow. With the pulled chicken. It's quite expensive, that's good, good isn't though. it? <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's good why stuff. it's good. That's why it's good. Anyway. Anyway, yeah. Let's... Anyway, back to the coasters. Right. Um, okay, Kieran wants to know what's your coast account. Uh, God, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Dude, this is, <laughs> that's embarrassing. I have no idea. I don't think I saved it anywhere. Uh, let me just quickly search through. Like, uh, I think I do have a document somewhere. Um, this this little txt file on my computer, but that's outdated. No, that's that's not it. Um, all I can say is that it, it's above one hundred. I know that for sure. Because Piraten was my 100th coaster, if I remember correctly. Mm. Um, I'm actually just going to search on Google Docs right, real quick. Yeah, yeah, actually. Here, here, here we go. Coaster list. I think it even includes in what order I wrote them. Oh, um, wow. So I remember You're it being something man. like 100 and a little bit. Uh, so it's 127. There you go. Which adds up to about 60 a year in the past two years. Which, wow. even though the number isn't that high, I think that's fairly impressive. Yeah. I, th- I mean, I've been riding coasters since a little over two years. So that's about like 60, 50, 60 a year so far. Yeah. So that's not too bad. That's pretty, that's a lot because w- didn't we say mine's like probably, it's probably like, what was mine? I don't know. Like, I feel like 80? Yours would be, yeah, 70, 80. And I've been doing it for like, well, five years, I guess. That's still very yeah. respectable though. To be fair. It's we all didn't Harry's really, fault. We didn't do much in the first ones. Yeah, this is true. It's only recently that we've been particularly, I don't know, crazy about visiting places. Yeah. Mm. But 60 so, a year is like solid. Yeah. Very. So what about you, Harry? I'm on 124. Oh, I've got you beat then. Uh-huh. Wait, how many did you have? I didn't hear it. 127. Ah, fair Ooh, enough. Oh, close. Yeah. This is it. I haven't really... Well, you get many people who do like chains of parks. Mm-hmm. And... I'd only really done that last year for the first time. Yeah, doing, like getting more in one hit. Yeah, doing mm. Wallaby Holland, Heidi Park and Hansa Park in a string. That was the only... I've only ever done parks individually. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Takes longer. Yeah. No, I, I just I just haven't really... I try to visit places and parks nearby rather than visit theme parks and that's it. I, you see what I mean. totally agree with this, actually. Honestly, I can hardly understand people who go to completely <laughs> new different countries and only visit theme parks. Same. And I'm not judging them. I can totally see if that's like what you're just most interested in. But for me, theme parks are more of a secondary thing. Like if I'm somewhere, um, theme parks will be part of the reason of going somewhere. But I yeah. also want to do, you know see the cities oh, yeah. uh do other like things that you want to see try the food etc you know theme parks are a fun thing to do on the side in traveling um but they're not like my one and only reason no i definitely agree god i was actually wondering though as for your coaster credits uh do you credit whore the theme parks do you ride every no. junior coaster okay right no we we in well it, it usually depends on who I'm with and, and how busy it is. Mm-hmm. You know, some people like to, to credit whore. When I went with the Americans, they really went on everything. Oh, yeah. Um, but we didn't ride the kiddie coasters at Liseberg. Uh, all of the really small kiddie coasters mm-hmm. that you look like an idiot riding. 
<laughs> I Same. just don't. I just kind of stay away from. But oh. also, it's like, what would you rather do? Ride that or go on Helix again? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, it. and you've only got so much time, so. Yeah. It's also interesting how, uh, maybe you guys have heard this this saying before. I don't recall the exact saying, but I once found this saying which goes something along the lines of, uh, a, a regular theme park visitor rides the small rides to build up the courage to build, to ride the bigger ones. And a coaster <laughs> enthusiast rides the big rides to build up the courage to ride the small ones. Just because they, they need to get the big ones out of the way and then it's like, all right, time to credit whore the kiddie coasters and then yeah. you have to embarrass yourself as a grown man on yeah. a train full of kids. It is hard going on a kid's ride. Yeah. yeah it is. Now, I'm actually, Especially if there's only a couple of you. It's kind of awkward. Yeah. yeah. I'm in the you same boat. You have to do a ride take over. there. Yeah. <laughs> like when we did, I don't know what the one at Wallaby Holland's called. Can you remember, Sylph? A Draco? The, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And we like took the entire train or a decent chunk of the train. That said, for me, that's become one of those rides which you just ride for the hell of it, just because it's yeah. funny. And every single time I've been there, I've written it with some people and it's always yeah. just been, you know, a, a big joke. Just a, just having a laugh and everybody shouting and screaming as if they are terrified. It's just fun. But I think a coaster like that is on the, the verge it's. I, I feel like that's nearly big enough yeah. to be. I'm. I'm only usually talking about the really tiny kids rides, right? Rather than the. You get some bigger kind of family, children's rides, mm -hmm. um, like Midgard at uh, uh, Hansa Park. Yeah, I would ride that just normally. Yeah, so actually, it's that's actually a decent. nice ride. I like. Yeah, it. exactly. And then you've got stuff like Wild Mouses. Oh, yeah. Which, again, they're big enough to be just ride them anyway kind of things. Yep. It also so, depends on the theme, though, because if it's like a kid's theme, like a show yeah. or something, that's yeah. so awkward to ride because, like, literally hundreds of kids would be queuing up for it. Like, oh, let's go on the, like, Octonauts ride. And then well, you're just it. there trying to ride it. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking, when Octonauts was 2015, I didn't ride it until 2017. Yeah. So... And... And we rode it that one time with everybody where yeah, we took we over the train, which was fine yeah. because firstly, like, no kids were there queuing up. No, we were the first ones. <laughs> because normally the queue's like an hour yeah. for the kids. So you don't want to stand with all these kids for an hour to ride it. That would be so Definitely weird. Not. Yeah. Um, okay, let's keep moving on. Somebody called John Ann Smith or something says, uh, what are your top five coasters? Uh, now, I don't know if you have a top five. I I mean, I have a top ten, which top five okay. is a bit of a, a lesser... You do have a top ten. Yeah, yeah, I do, actually. Let's hear it. Uh, oh. <laughs> top ten to, ten to first. Right. So I, I, I was actually about to say, let's hear yours first, Harry, but then I realized <laughs> that, that's been posted on the Coasterbot channel, so... This is true. If you want to know my plug, top plug, ten... Plug. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, my top ten, just hold up. I need to open this real quick. Um, I do keep it. I, I don't like religiously follow it because I don't really like no. the idea of ranking them too much. But it's it's nice to have have it as yeah. a conversation piece, I think, and to well, remember well, this what is you it. really like. This is what I did mine for. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but <laughs> I just wanted to have it right there. Now, every, every time someone asks you, what's your top 10, just send them the link. Well, yeah, this is it. <laughs> and I did have... Genius idea. I did have someone say that they... Were exactly the same, or they can't remember it, and it's they have to. It's hard to remember check. ten in an order, oh, yeah. though. Sometimes you just don't care. <clears throat> you know what, though? When I saw your video, I was like, "Damn, I need to make a video like that as well." So I might actually make a top ten video. Yeah, probably. you should. Uh, but for now, uh, I guess I should just give it really quick with some basic details. All right, so my number ten is Lech Coaster in. Fair. Poland, which is a really underrated coaster. Not not too many people have written this, um, but it's a new generation Vekoma. Super smooth, really nice theming. It goes through the station with this like zero G roll element. It's really nice. Uh, I grade out on that every single time I wrote it. Uh, <laughs> it's intense as heck, and just altogether really nice coaster. I love it, um, and I want to see more new gen Vekomas, especially yeah. Uh, in places where more people will be able to write them and realize just how amazing they are. Uh, so number nine is Goliath 
which has been slowly but surely moving down my top 10 list over the years. And I feel like in a few years, it's going to be all the way at the bottom of my total list. Mm -hmm. I've been enjoying this coaster less and less over time, uh, realizing in part what you talked about, Harry, just the whole middle section with the helixes kind of yeah. destroys the pacing of it. Yeah, it does. Um, but it still has some amazing airtime moments. Like it has Which is why amazing it makes a 10. airtime, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that's that's a deserved number nine. I don't want to, you know, throw too much shade on the Goliath. It's still a really <laughs> enjoyable coaster. Yeah, it really is. So number eight is Flying Dinosaur in Oh. Um what is that again? It's in Osaka. It's in Universal it's Studios. Japan. Yeah. It's uh it's probably the best BM flying coaster in the world. Uh, mm. The only other one that I've written is Tatsu, which I thought was way Looks less good. good. But it's not quite as intense. Flying no, Dinosaur, flying dinosaur yeah. is just, um, it's it's got that same element that um, Skyscraper has, or, or Starry Skyscraper, that that one weird flying coaster in China. The one where the you start off... zero like, G that carries on. Yeah, the zero G that actually rotates. Uh, yeah. How much it's is cool. it? Like 480 degrees. It's... No, 520. That 540. Is, yeah. 540. Okay, yeah, thanks. I'm terrible. <laughs> okay. So 540 no. degrees, it's insane. It's, you go into that, like, upside down. Yeah. And you rotate a full twist and then another half a twist in one element. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Really fun. It has a super forceful pretzel loop as well. And the rest of the ride doesn't pull any punches either. It's amazing. And it even has a really nice theming to boot. I also really like the whole Jurassic Park theme. I like the Jurassic mm. Park movie. Just everything about this run is nice, except the queue line, which regularly uh, goes yeah. up to three hours, which is a Pretty bit grim. unfortunate. So we had to, you know, be there at the opening and run to Flying Dinosaur to get a decent queue, but it was totally worth it. Uh, number seven, uh, this one is going to make Harry mad. <laughs> <laughs> number seven is Canon. Yeah. <laughs> I liked the start of this ride very much i love the indoor part the theming and story is amazing but the rest of the ride for me just doesn't do it as much especially the lower to the ground sections i thought it had a little bit too much of a rattle i didn't like the elements that much and i think it loses steam after the first element a little bit still an amazing ride though i can i can see that i think it, yeah it's, it's a polarizing ride i don't know what it for me it's just relentlessness right I, I really appreciated the low to the ground bits because it really does give you a sense of speed. Mm -hmm. And you, you kind of get a similar thing on Goliath where the start of the helixes are low to the ground and fast, but then they get boring very quickly. True. Whereas I feel like Karnan weaves enough not to. So no, That's a very good but, point, actually. And uh, uh, no, I can see it. I, uh, it's respectable. I totally... Yeah. Yeah, I would I, I would also I should also add, I mean, this is number seven on one hundred and twenty seven rides that I've been on. So mm. I I just wanted to list the negatives, but still there's way more that I love about this ride. I think it's absolutely yeah, yeah, amazing yeah. and all the praise that Harry gives, it totally it totally deserves. Um so number six is Helix. Uh yep. I guess we've talked enough about this. We but have, yeah. What I really like about <laughs> this ride is actually the exact same as Harry that one point where you get into the Norwegian loop and then the zero yeah. zero and then that helix to the left. My it's God. Such a good string. That it's... had me wondering like, why is this so much more intense than other Mac coasters? Yeah. No. What is this one doing? It just, it's, it's intense. It throws you yeah. around with no care for your well being whatsoever. And nope. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> great. Absolutely great. So yeah, amazing coaster. Um, number five is wildfire in coal Martin. Mm, that's one okay. we haven't talked about yet <clears throat> but also no. one of the best coasters in europe probably yeah yeah, yeah my definitely. first rmc i think actually no it wasn't this was my second rmc the only other one that i've written is twisted colossus mm -hmm. but wildfire just has it beats the way that it follows the terrain it does all of these insane elements uh it has a great sensation of speed and the there's an there's an outbanked turn somewhere near the start of the ride, which just kind of hangs you above these Swedish forests with a view of the <laughs> ocean. And, oh, it's amazing. It's so good. So, it honestly looks it. So, Yeah, I highly recommend that you visit it one day. Well, hopefully this year. But we'll see. Oh, yeah. Make <laughs> your way out there. It's amazing. The, the rest of the zoo in general, actually, I'm not normally a zoo person, 
not because I don't like watching animals, but because I don't really like watching animals in really tight enclosures. Mm-hmm. Um, but the zoo is really beautiful, and uh, it's almost it's more like a wildlife park than an actual yeah. zoo. Um, I've heard many people praise the zoo. Yeah, it's amazing. So yeah, I really like that about the rest of the park. So number four, uh, this is a bit of a controversial decision. I decided to put two coasters at number four because they are nearly identical. <laughs> There's Piraten and Kawasemi. Uh, Piraten oh, okay. in Fair. Denmark and Kawasemi in uh, in Japan, in Tobu Zoo. And I did like Piraten much more when I wrote it, but... I mean, officially, these are the exact same coaster. They're an off-the-shelf yeah. Intamin Megalite, so I didn't want to make a differentiation there. I rode Kawasemi almost alone every single time. That started getting a little bit awkward every time that <laughs> had to go up to the station again and, oh, here's this foreigner again riding this coaster when the rest of the park is empty. Uh, it was also Wait, ran- just you in the train? Uh, yeah, actually, most of the time there was one other guy with me, but, but I then never rode that's... it with more than two people on it. I can imagine that's why you like it less. Yeah, because it just doesn't it just doesn't go as fast with not that many exactly. people on it. And if, if uh, it's a dead day, it didn't run as much, so it wouldn't have sped up as much. Exactly. Uh, so. I I was still impressed though because they they did um, they did just run it continually. I've heard some horror stories that you had to wait for fifteen minutes until there were more people on the train. Uh, no. They didn't do that. <laughs> I just went straight back to the station every time, and they just uh, that's good. They just kept going the whole time. So that was really good. Um, but, you know, it's it's a cold winter's weekday. All the Japanese people were out there working. Nobody wants to go to a theme park uh, on a day like that, no. except uh, one foreigner enthusiast like me. So not the best setting. Uh, then again, didn't have any lines. Uh, I could pretty much enjoy the ride as if it were my own private coaster. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> uh, but I rode Piraten in the evening, full train, and it was noticeably faster just because it's a full train and it's later yeah. in the day. So amazing ride, actually. I haven't even talked about the layout. The layout is just, I think, the most perfect coaster layout that you could possibly design. It's not very tall and it doesn't have a lot of space. So obviously you could make a better coaster. Um, but given the what they had, I don't think you could pull any better layout out of that. The pacing is perfect. It has amazing ejector airtime on every single hill uh it's just airtime after airtime after airtime with all these quick curves and transitions in between and a few twisted airtime hills which are especially amazing and uh it just uses up all of its kinetic energy until the end and you hit the brake run and you just want to do another ride mm. so yeah ride ride an intimate megalite also I, I don't think you've been <laughs> on one yet right no no ah oh, it's so good i love it so number three. Yeah, okay. I should move quicker through this list. So number, <laughs> number three is X2 because this, okay, yeah. this is a very controversial one, but I like it. I know a lot of people don't because it's quite rough, but I really I know like a lot of people do. Coasters. So Right. I know some people just, you know, they dislike it. This is a ride which is either at the top of your top 10 or down in uh, like yeah. some kind of you know, purgatory of these are coasters I will never ride again. Um, yeah, definitely. Personally, I like it. I like how intense it is, how it throws you around, how you lose your orientation. But that said, my number two is Age Anika, which is pretty much X2, but bigger and better in every way. I think personally, except the soundtrack, Age Anika is a really annoying soundtrack and X2 is a pretty cool one. But Age Anika is just bigger, it's faster. And the first element on Age Anika uh, is a zero zero where it's a regular hill on X2. And what makes Ijenaika so good? I think it's that element because it goes through a zero zero, so you've got an inversion, but then also the seats are flipping. Uh, so cool. So you just move in ways that you never see coming and you totally lose track of what's up and what is down. And in the meantime, it also pulls you around with crazy high G forces. Uh, so yeah, amazing ride. And, uh, yeah, you've probably seen this coming, but my number one is Terran for some <laughs> reasons that we've also talked about. I like it yep. less as a coaster than Ijenaika, but the whole scenery and everything, the smell of bacon and cheese in the morning, <laughs> uh, that just makes it for me. So yeah, that's it. There we go. Yeah, no, I do think you should make a video about that. It'd be good. Right. I'll try. Although, I guess I've already spoiled it for some of the people who watch this video. But there's, there's a lot more to it if you yeah, talk right. about it and, you know... 
just make sure it's not 45 minutes long. <laughs> I'm going to go over that. <laughs> we did have a question from Taylor Bybee. Oh. And he said, I would love to hear about some of your experiences in the Japan parks. Any advice for a first time visitor or any non theme park must sees while I'm over there? I think the latter is probably the best one to go. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, but it's also one where I, I can talk for hours about that topic as well. Um, yeah, any non theme park must sees. So I know that, I know where Taylor is going, and I know he's going to Osaka to go to Universal Studios. I think it's worth it to take a, a little less than an hour train trip from Osaka to Nara Park in Nara, which is not a, a theme park, um, mm -hmm. but it, it's this park with lots of temples, uh, beautiful nature, and there's hundreds, actually maybe thousands of deer roaming around. Um, wow. And it's so cool because these these deers are just so used to humans being around them. Oh, um, so these ones. Yeah, right. Uh, and because the, because it's a religious thing. Uh, so I believe in the uh, Shinto religion, they're seen as something holy. I think uh, killing a deer used to also be punished quite heavily. Um, and because of that, they're just kind of out there, used to the humans around them. And they're just amazing. They're so cute. Uh, you can pet them and everything. Oh my God. Uh, feed them rice crackers. Uh, oh. It's super nice and just the temples and everything in the area are also really cool uh, kyoto i think as a city is kind of a must see it's a beautiful city with a lot of amazing history to it mm -hmm. um and when you're in tokyo itself i think um because they are going to tokyo dome city i believe to ride thunder dolphin th they are i think yeah right next to thunder dolphin there's a building called uh, the bunkyo civic center which is an office building it's just a city hall so there's just lots of office workers there uh, but the top floor is actually public access and you don't see that many tourists there and i think a lot of people know about this uh, but you can literally just walk into the office take the elevator to the top floor and have this amazing view of tokyo and oh, contrary wow. to some of the other free observation platforms, or even the paid ones that a lot of tourists end up going to, this one is super quiet and you can just enjoy the view uh, and see whatever you want to. So I highly recommend checking that building next to Tokyo Dome City. Mm. It's quite recognizable, actually. It's the, it's the weird looking one with like a semi-circular glass floor on, on top of the building. It's right next to Tokyo Dome City. Cool. So, yeah. I want to go to Japan nice. now. Yeah. It's <sighs> oh, um, expensive, isn't it, though? Yeah, it I know. Is. Everything's expensive. Um, it's very true. Yeah, we had some questions about um, kind of like planet coaster type stuff. So, mm. Airtime Moment says planet coaster tips, and Lush Velvet Coaster says what keeps you inspired playing planet coaster? Right. Um, so first off, I always find it quite hard to give any tips because I don't think there's anything like any secrets that I know about <laughs> the game that just, you know, help me play it. Yeah. It's just that I've played it for hundreds of hours and <laughs> just kind of know where everything is and how everything works. Um, I think the best tip that I can give is just sort of about your enjoyment of the game, uh, not to look too much what, what other, people's or other people are doing and just kind of come up with something that you want to build. Just don't blindly go into the game and try stuff. Just, you know, make sure you've got something that you really want to try. Like maybe you want to try building your own Disney park or uh, maybe you really like Trips Drill and you want to build something like it, uh, which is something that went into my head at some point, for instance. Um, and as long as you have that sort of motivation of, some kind of fantasy that you want to fulfill in the game uh it's just fun to mess around and build stuff and i think that's just the most important thing about enjoying it not to try and get anything out of it and not to work even to some kind of end product uh, because that takes a lot of work but just enjoy it in the moment for what you're doing and go for something that you really want to try and i guess for inspiration something similar goes i think i take my inspiration out of things that i really like uh, so one of my parks was inspired by Trips Drill just because I really like the park. And um, 
actually something that I do very often for inspiration is to go on Google Maps and go onto the, the 3D uh, maps. You can do that on Google Earth as well, I believe. And mm -hmm. just walk around theme parks that I really like because that usually inspires me most on what to do with scenery and park layouts and um, how in general things should just kind of fit together. That's cool, actually. I never thought of doing that. Yeah, it's it's super cool. It's been more of a recent thing, but I think most of the major theme parks are now available in 3D on Google Maps. Mm. So wow. that's a really good way to check them out. Um, speaking of your channel, what mm. do you have coming up next? Like, do you have any big things planned or any like theme park trips you want to talk about? Uh, I don't really have too much planned, to be honest. Um, for now, I just want to finish the Park Tech campaign. And I also want to finish uh, some of the Planet Coaster projects that I've been doing. Mm -hmm. And I want to start a new City Skylines project, actually, which is not coaster related, but I haven't done one of those in a while. And I really want to try again to make a, a Dutch city in City Skylines. That's just something nice. that's been on my mind quite a bit. Oh, yeah. And I'm working on a dark ride in Planet Coaster. I'm trying to make this horror themed Eurofighter coaster, which is all oh. indoors. Ooh. Kind of inspired, actually, a little bit by uh, Novgorod and Kernon. Very um, nice. So yeah, we'll see when that comes out. Awesome. So this is our like ending question. It's quite hard. Uh -huh. um, if you had to pick one coaster to be your last ride ever, what would it be? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> what does this mean? Is this my last ride because it <laughs> crashes halfway through and I well, end up spliced like to open on to interpretation? Sports? <laughs> okay. Uh, God. Well, See, this this is this is a hard one. Yeah, because you can go something new or something solid that you already know. Yeah, that makes sense actually. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's. I I think I would like it to be. Hmm. I mean, Terran probably. Although <laughs> I would also really like. The Flying Dutchman as a last ride, mm. even though it's not in my top 10. It's yeah. one of my favorite coasters, scenery-wise, and the whole story around it and everything is just so nostalgic to me. I really love it. Yeah. And if there was one experience that would go, you know, uh, into the history books as my last ride and this one ride that I would remember most fondly, um, I would actually probably t take the Flying Dutchman. That's a good answer. It is, it is. What about you guys then? Oh, no one's ever asked us before. Yeah. Oh, I don't like being asked questions. <laughs> <laughs> what if the guests um, ask the questions back? <laughs> then you, um, you get kicked off. Mm. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> the cool ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I could be brave enough to try something new. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Yeah, I don't think I would do it. It's kind of like, you know how you're a 100th coaster? You're always trying to make that something special and something that you can remember fondly. So this is... Yeah, man, limit how you park. It's really good. Yeah, this is how <laughs> I would interpret it, though. Like, you know, it's not the last coaster because you die. It's just uh, going to go into your mind. It's the last coaster that you've been on ever. And, you know, it needs to be something special that means something to you, I think. Yeah, I think that's true, actually. But then again, I'm kind of thinking X2. But then it's like you'd never have the chance to ever ride one that you've never done. Yeah, right. So it's like, do you want to have the chance to ride it or do you want to just go with something special? Mm. True. It's hard. The more I think about it, like after I rode Karna, sorry, um, I didn't have a bucket list coaster. That was my bucket list coaster for as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the more I think about it, X2 is my bucket list coaster now i think you gotta you gotta move edge and Ica up in there but i think it's slightly uh, better than the next two i'm sure it is but then there's the whole kind of it was the first one you got right the soundtrack with it and it's america it, i don't know it's just i've heard a lot about that ride and i've seen it a lot of times that's quite a quite an american style argument you've got there it's better because it's in america <laughs> huh <laughs> yeah, no, it's quite a backwards route, isn't it? I I think it would just mean more to me than riding a better version. I no, that's right now actually. I actually remember uh, because when you drive up to Magic Mountain, they put that ride on display, and you know it's right yeah. up there in the front when you drive onto the parking lot. And I remember feeling a lot more 
hyped about it in a way than Age of Nika, even though Age of Nika is, I think, in hindsight, the better coaster. Seeing X2 was kind of like, you know, this is a legend. This is where it started. Um, so, yeah, I, I do remember it meaning more to me at the moment. Mm. This is it. I think it would just be a lot more hype. Right. Just because of, yeah, where it is and the legacy that it's got. That's very fair. What about you, Zoe? I'm just going to say Helix. Boring. I know. Right. I know it's boring, but I know that it would be good. Do you know? Yeah, I know. I guess that's it then. Yeah. Um, thanks for coming on. It was good. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been fun. Um, yes. Do you want to like plug anything, like your channel or whatever? Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, sure. If you're, uh, if any of your viewers are into Planet Coaster videos or similar creative sandbox game videos, then by all means, go check out my channel. That's pretty much what I do. And aside from that, I don't really do too much coaster related things or coaster enthusiast related things. Um, I might do a theme park vlog every now and then. And actually, I still have a few on my computer that I should probably get to editing, but ah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, just just know that I'm not, you know, a, a roller coaster channel per se. I'm just into it. And it's, it's part of what I kind of do. But I'm, I'm a gaming channel in the first place. You're a gamer. I am a true gamer. Um, as gamers, up. we must rise up. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's my plug. I don't really plug too well. Um, yeah, we don't like plugging either. I guess follow us on Twitter. Um, what else we got? YouTube. Instagram, uh, give right? us another. No. Uh, no. Harry has Instagram. Well, Coasterbot has Instagram. Oh. Um, which actually we post for the podcast on there. So if you want to... See the Instagram for the podcast. Go to Coasterbot. Yeah, we just well, we're gonna tweet today, but obviously this will be coming out in the future. So about the new mini sodes, but we'll explain that in the actual mini sode. So that's big news, big news. But um, other than that, big news that's already come out. Yeah, big news that you already know about, and <laughs> yeah, so a couple more iTunes reviews. So thanks for people who did that because that's really nice. Yeah, so um, give us a, a, a saying that people should leave a review with. That's a good idea. Anything, and we'll leave it like that. <laughs> Wait, a saying that people should leave well, a I like review? to say that people should go on to, go on to iTunes reviews and say right. something really dumb. And just something uh, we have like three fun. reviews that just say, this podcast is cool, and, yeah, and exactly. that's it. Yeah, that's true. you got to get some memes in there. So, uh, <laughs> go on. What should people leave as their review? Five stars and say... <laughs> subscribe to theme park worldwide on youtube <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. please do that please do that That'd why did we not think of that i don't know. oh my god that's so good so five stars itunes <laughs> subscribe to theme park worldwide on youtube <laughs>